All right, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar entitled Balsam, Less Noise, More Signal. My name is Stephen Harrington, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing Operations here at Risk Networks, and we're really excited to have you on today as we walk through some of our latest features and hopefully get some feedback and um, go from there. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're joined by uh, Zane Whitener, our VP of Product Development, who's been at Risk Networks for about five years now. Uh, some of you may remember him during his customer success and technical architect days. He's moved into uh, VP of product development and has made a huge impact over there. We're also joined by Lauren Hackler, our customer success manager. Uh, she's been with us for about eight months and comes uh, with a lot of experience from Gartner. Uh, some of you may know her as well. So today we're going to walk through uh, what's available in the platform and see, Zane's gonna show us some of the features. We'll pause uh, to answer a few questions, and then we'll have an introduction to customer success. Let Lauren kind of explain what uh, the customer success role does here at Risk Networks. Then we'll do a Q&A, and we'll wrap up, and I can, I'll tell you guys how you can get access to three months of security at no cost. So before we get started, a couple things. Uh, please remember that people from several different companies are on the call, so try not to share any confidential details. Uh, we'll have three poll questions during the webinar, so answer them as they appear so you can be entered in our drawing for a year of, of security at no cost. Again, we'll pause for questions periodically, and at the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A, and if we don't answer any questions, we'll respond via email. This webinar is being recorded, so you will receive a copy of the recording after the webinar. Um, and please submit your questions either through the questions panel on GoToWebinar or, or chat, and I will try to answer them as they come up. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Zane and let him kind of give you a walk through the platform. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Thanks for that nice introduction. Um, and hey, everybody, or good evening or good morning, uh, depending on where you are around the world. Um, so let me go ahead. Let's see, I am showing my screen here. Um, so I wanted to start out and, and kind of introduce the um, Balsam release primarily around, you know, a lot of people use us for a cloud transformation use case. And Whenever we're thinking about cloud migration, generally we find that there are kind of four major roadblocks to moving that project forward. One is we can't get moving. I don't know where to start. I don't wanna, don't know what I have. How do I prioritize? Another might be pricing uncertainty. What is it gonna cost? Does it make business sense for us to do this? Three might be performance concerns. So how's it gonna behave? What, uh, you know, am I going to break something? I'm a little worried about application performance. And then four would be security. Can I secure it? What needs to happen? I don't, I don't have a good feel on what my posture should be. And so the top three questions, we've been putting a lot of focus into helping removing those roadblocks. And now with security, we're trying to answer the fourth as we help move things forward. So I'm going to jump into the platform now. I'm going to show you guys some of the new features that are out there, uh, and we'll just kind of step through them. So let me just hop in here. And so I think where I want to start is I'm just going to hop over to the old dashboard. So some of you, and I'm sure, are familiar with this um, with this page, and what will immediately draw your eye is uh, the app to app model here. So lots of people see this, get in here, move things around. Um, and I heard a lot of our customers and partners uh, refer to this as um, the hairball or uh, the plate of spaghetti. And so we really wanted to change your first interaction with the platform to go from something that might be a little overwhelming and give you a sense of, uh, you know, dread perhaps, uh, to 
something maybe a little bit more elegant. So I'm gonna kind of load the new dashboard now. And so probably the first thing you see will be what we call the orb over here on the right. And the orb is the same data that you were seeing just in that last force directed graph. It's just laid out a little bit differently. And so what we've done here is a part of our demo, we've applied tags to the stacks or the applications that are in this environment, specifically departmental tags. And so each uh, sort of ray of the sun here is an application stack. And so you might see I have Tableau here as well as some inventory database hosts. And both of these apps are kind of being bundled together here, you can see by the ring. And if I hover over this middle ring, I can see up here in my legend, it's telling me the department is BI. That's who, what department I've tagged these with. And maybe down here, PeopleSoft and Payroll, hover over there, oh, that's human resources, production, uh, sales. And so in your environments, you can add stack tags start to make this visualization have a bit more meaning. And so the interesting thing here may be even, uh, I mentioned BI, and so I'm gonna just take the transparency uh, down a little bit. So I'm gonna make it a little bit harder to see the lines. So when I hover over them, it's gonna be a little bit clearer. And so now as I look at this graph, I can say, well, what, what is my BI department not talking to? And what should they be? You know, as I look up here, Right. I see I have this call center app that belongs to sales that apparently uh, BI is not talking to. Okay, that might be important. And so this is a way to get a completely new view on your environment and be able to answer questions uh, that were probably a little bit harder to get to beforehand. And you can do some cool things here. You know, I can uh, make the bundling stronger or weaker uh, so this would be, as you're seeing here, this is pretty much what the old visualization looks like uh, relative to the new visualization as we bring those connections tighter. Uh, and generally, I recommend that the larger the environment is, you want to move these sliders to the right, the smaller the environment, you want to move these to the left. And for anything I review today, know that there is this little bell up here. We have some tours. Uh, of the orb, of the, of the release, geo, geolocation, a lot of the features. So, you know, if you miss something, hop in the orb, take the tour yourself. And so you can come in here and say, you know what, maybe I just want to see um, those apps that are kind of making me money, right? So let's get rid of um, IT because that's, uh, that's a bit of an overlay, right? I want to see those things that are related to the business. Let's get rid of that not set tag. And so now I can kind of reduce the noise of the visualization on my environment and only be looking at certain sets of apps. So again, just another way to explore the data. On this page, you will also see the assessment digest. So this is gonna give you some insight into sort of how big the data lake is that we're collecting, how many connections we're collecting per week, how many total performance records we've collected, as well as the, how many devices are currently licensed. You can get a kind of a quick quick snapshot lay of the land. What am I looking at here sort of in tandem? And then below that, you'll see a new stack digest. So this is just a replacement for the table that was there previously, just a bit more elegant way to explore the environment and do search uh, and then navigate on to the uh, app itself, as well as a panel for geolocation, which we'll get into in just a second, as well as a panel uh, to take you off to our threats page. And then we have the graphs below uh, that existed previously. All right, so I'm gonna navigate over to the threats page in the security module now, um, but I'm gonna stop and just see uh, if there's any questions uh, before I move on uh, to security. Uh, Zane, just one quick question. Someone asked why this is called Balsam. <laughs> Good question. Um, so, you know, we uh, are located in the uh, in the mountains of uh, North Carolina, a little town called Asheville. Um, and, uh, well, there's lots of trees around there. And uh, balsam, uh, so there's the uh, balsam fir tree, which is a pine tree. 
um, that exist in the area. So we're trying to name our releases after uh, trees, and uh, we did aspen back in November. So A, B, uh, and now we're on balsam. So we try to pick trees that are local to the area whenever we can. Uh, but this is really just more about us um, having quarterly named releases. Um, you know, other companies, like say ServiceNow, might name theirs after cities around the world. Um, I've heard others about, uh, you know, foods and Google, I think, was what, candy or something like this. So um, that'd be why. Okay, and the only other uh, question we've had thus far is whether or not this is a lot is live in all assessments today. Um, so this is currently live on all of our SAS deployments. So any flex deploy uh, does not have these features yet. So we're expecting the, this uh, release to land on flex deploy uh, next week. So typically flex deploy releases are about a month. Um, after the SAS release. Good question. Okay, so let's move on um, to, I think we'll start with geolocation. So for geolocation, this is a page where uh, we are plotting on a map every internet IP that is talking to your environment. So the, of the uh, connectivity records that we have, we're collecting all the public IP addresses and then we're mapping those uh, to, to where we think they're coming from in the world. And so this can have a couple different use cases. One can be uh, specifically for cloud migration. So where are my users in the world? And what region should I migrate into? So this assessment doesn't have a whole lot of connectivity on it here, but you can see, um, Say I have a fair amount of connectivity around Washington, D.C., one up in New York. Let's see what that is. I can kind of get some details on it. How many times, 260 times we've seen this uh, IP connect to us. It's accessed our CRM app, um, our ERP dev app, and three more, um, as well as talking to one of our locations. So think of this as like a certain branch office. And so I can get some kind of good information about if I'm thinking about where are my users, where should I locate to. At the same time, uh, we will do what we call, okay, let's say show high risk areas. So these would be connections that um, are coming from countries that uh, in, in a list that's maintained by Stanford University as well as uh, the, the State Department of the United States. Um, you know, places of travel advisories, things like this. So we want to kind of draw some attention to uh, connections that are coming from potentially high-risk areas. Uh, you know, here we have some from Russia, um, over here from um, Hong Kong. I can see it's talking to my Active Directory stack, uh, and maybe that's okay. Uh, but we want to call a bit of attention um, to those types of connections. So let's hop over to our threats page. And so geolocation is a part of our new security module, as well as this new threats page. And so when you land on the page A, you'll see the map again, and this is only gonna be filtered to those high risk connections. Additionally, as we come over here, uh, we'll have our threat coverage panel. And so this panel is meant to kind of indicate to you, okay, well, how many devices are we looking at here? So 94 out of 119. And then how many of those are what we call under threat? And so with the security module, every night, every 24 hours, we run checks against all the devices in the environment that we're monitoring. So if I kind of scroll down the page here a little bit, you'll see we have this threat checks section. And so this is a listing of, of those checks, as well as how many times that check has basically been failed. Um, and so you can explore that here. You could also say, um, I come back, go back to them. Um, you know, what devices were these? I can explore that as I hit these drop down to see, okay, uh, I have a vulnerable package running. And every check is going to have a check impact. So you'll see here low, intermediate, high. And so what a check impact is responsible for is how it affects a device's, what we call a device's threat level. So I'm going to scroll back up the page here. So here you can see the different levels. And so out of the 84, 
I have 45 devices that we are assigning a level five threat to. And so think of threat levels. It's essentially a scoring system where we see, okay, this server has failed. This check, this check, this check, this check. And so that might be an example of like, okay, at a level one, maybe that server has a uh, vulnerability on an installed package. We see that a lot. Um, it, it may not be enough to just sort of move it up to a level two. It's not a big deal. You should know about it, but don't like freak out. Versus, hey, it uh, has a vulnerability on an installed package, uh, but now that package, we've seen it running. So it's not just installed, it is now running. We've seen an executable that maps back to that installed package. So maybe that bumps it up to a level two or three. And then we say, oh, and that server is now talking. That package is talking. And when it talks, we see that it's talking to the internet, which is a bit riskier. And so maybe that bumps it up to a level four. And then for instance, oh, and when it talks to the internet, it's talking to, um, you know, Somalia. And so maybe, or an anonymous proxy. Let's bump that up to a level five. This is a pretty serious thing you need to look at. And so this is our way of trying to, to separate that signal from the noise. Because we found in our own environments, you know, when we would do our own vulnerability scanning, things would come back to us. And it's like, okay, it's good to know. There's a vulnerability there. Let's get it fixed. But if you look at it, it's like, yeah, but that server is inside our environment. So for anyone to be able to exploit that vulnerability, they would already have to be inside the network. And so, uh, you know, I got bigger problems. And so we wanted to just provide a bit of a prioritization mechanism to help you be able to focus. And so what you'll be able to see within the graph here is how those threats are changing. Uh, where I might have uh, level five threats going down, level one threats going up here, and so forth and so on. And you can filter this by date. So if I wanted to only see, um, you know, my checks between a certain date, I can filter that date range, change my graph. Here we can get into the different checks, things like vulnerable packages, uh, new listening processes, a new installed software, connectivity to high-risk areas, or anonymous proxies. We'll also look for uh, anomalous behavior. Hey, this device started connecting to the internet when it hadn't connected to the internet previously. Um, it has unused listening processes, so it has ports open that we haven't seen connections on. And so to just kind of get a sense of what things we're doing checks on, and we're certainly trying to roll more checks out. Um, Below this, we're going to get into the devices under threat table. So this is basically a listing of every device in the environment by day. So be sure you pay particular attention to the date column. Uh, in nearly all this release, you know, we've done a lot of work to get time into the platform. And so here I can jump in and say, okay, well, show me every check this device has failed. So it's basically two different types of pivot tables and how you might want to look at this. And the interesting thing here is, you know, let me sort this uh, sort of by threat level. Let's see what we have here. Um, so my top threat levels, these fives, here I have my stack name, right? I can see that uh, my PeopleSoft application, you know, one of the servers that are running PeopleSoft is right near the top. And if I hold shift, so I can do a multi-sort, that's just a little pro tip for everybody who's on the call and say, okay, well, what's, what is the highest threat level and also failed the most checks? Okay, here I have Autodesk. Okay, interesting. Well, if I hop back over to my dashboard, I can, can begin to analyze this a bit differently, right? So the thing that is the highest threat is over here is Autodesk. And I can see exactly who he's talking to, what department that is. And, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I'm a defense contractor and, uh, you know, I'm making, um, I don't know, missile systems or something crazy. And so now all of a sudden it's like, oh, your uh, engineering department has vulnerabilities. 
not just your Autodesk app, your engineering department, or not just, uh, what do we have, Linux 04W4, which means nothing to anyone, really. Uh, we're trying to put it in context. And so again, we could review all those checks and, and see what they are. But further here at the bottom, we have the software vulnerabilities table. And so we've built an integration into the National Vulnerability Database, which is maintained by NIST, the National Institute of Science, uh, Standards and Technology. They maintain a, a database as well as uh, the OVAL um, repository it's basically collecting all the different vulnerabilities from all the Linux. Uh, so this is Linux, uh, Unix uh, operating systems only currently and refer to our documentation just to kind of get the, the exact list. But you can come in here, sort this by score, see where, uh, you know, I have really high vulnerabilities. And this is not our rating. This would be coming from uh, the National Vulnerability Database. We can see what that attack vector is. If I wanted to understand uh, what the description of that is and what the problem is, I could see what current version I have versus what the patched version um, is, so I can explore all that data um, here within the security modules. And I can also add tags and do some fun stuff here. I think it's important to also note that as I come off the page, we also have introduced this feature called Save or Load View. And so what I've done here is you can see that I've done some sorting on the page if I was kind of working through it. Um, and maybe what I want to also do is say, you know what, I just want to see, um, you know, my PeopleSoft. Right. So I'm just going to put that here. And so if I come back up here, you can see now it's put that into my query. And so I could save this as a view, PeopleSoft, for instance. Save that. Right? And so now I can share this as a link. I could say, you know, hey Joan, um, here's some here's some things we saw with your app. Go to this page. And so if Joan uses that URL, drops on this page, she'll be able to look at exactly the same data you were looking at. So we're really trying to also put features and help people explore and share the data in ways that were not possible. So yeah, this will be the uh, security module. Um, I'm going to stop again for a minute. I'm going to move on to the assets page uh, from here and talk a little bit about that. But I want to stop again and see if there's any questions uh, related to the new module. We did have a couple of questions. So the first question was, in addition to NIST, are you planning on adding any additional security frameworks? Um, so we have looked at um, adding both uh, compliance checks um, as well as we're, we're looking to further integrate into um, NIST database for uh, Windows vulnerabilities. So we're looking at that now for Windows operating system. Um, lastly, uh, we are looking at Cisco's uh, vulnerability database for um, P certs uh, and vulnerabilities on networking equipment. Um, so these would be kind of initial things we're looking at currently, um, and you know we'll we'll see where it, where it goes. And certainly if if you have specific databases or things you're looking uh, to pull data from or integrate with, we'd love to get that feedback um, and know what would be valuable to you. Perfect. And uh, along that same vein, do you have a roadmap uh, that you can share with customers? Um, yes, uh, certainly do. Um, I, nothing I'd, I'd prefer to not share here on the webinar, um, but we're, I would encourage you to uh, reach out to your um, customer success contact and I'm happy to set up a call um, with myself to get on, talk about roadmap, talk about current product, you know, I believe our customers are uh, the lifeblood of our organization and that feedback. And so um, there's a good chance that if you get on the call with me and, and, and give some feedback, there's a good chance it makes it into the product because we really try to listen 
and and give people what what they need and what's going to help. Okay, and one more question on the geolocation map. Uh, can you see which apps are being ex accessed um, from high risk areas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we actually have an improvement coming to this page um, in probably the next week or so that's going to improve the interface. So you'll see this is loading basically the last week of connectivity records. Um, and so we will have a way instead of this pop up, it'll slide out here from the side and you'll be able to go straight to the flow records um, that correspond to this. But here you can see um, what stacks are being talked to. Additionally, if I hit my fly out filter here, I can then um, filter to specific apps um, if I want to. And so again, we're, uh, we're making some changes to this interface just based on uh, feedback we've gotten since we've gotten it out, uh, as well as being able to load a bit more data into it. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you could filter this down to a specific app. And if you're looking for high risk connections too, you don't have to, you know, uh, if you're anything like me, I like maps. It's fun to just, you know, move it around and uh, see things. But you could also come down um, to the checks here and see device received connection from high risk area uh, and see exactly what. Um, so in this case here, I have a uh, this Windows 2003 SQL, uh, and he's a member of my inventory database hosts, um, and he received an inbound connection. Um, from Russia. Uh, and so we'll do those checks are uh, directional. So whether it received or initiated a connection. So if, whether it reached out or something reached in, something to just kind of keep in mind when you're reviewing these, there is some directionality. Okay. Perfect. That was the last question for now. Great. So I'm going to move on to the assets page. Um, and so this was also a really big uh, change uh, for uh, for all of our users. Um, the assets page was um, and is one of the most popular pages on the platform. Everyone goes to it. And we took a lot of feedback in building the current version. Uh, we know we still have a little bit of ways to go. Uh, to get it fully tweaked perfectly. Um, but you're going to notice a few things about this page when you land it. So first of all, we're going to just show you kind of assessment coverage. So how much of the environment have, have we discovered and have accessibility to. We'll also show you how those assets are changing over time. And my demo here has been kind of a fairly stable environment, so there hasn't been a lot of change. But we released a feature uh, be several months back called scheduled discoveries and so this is where you could set up that on-premise appliance to go out and do a discovery regularly so every week I'm gonna have my appliance go out and do a discovery and so now within this graph it will plot those changes and it will show you hey this week you had more Windows devices uh, than you did last week uh, or um, we can change here, let's group it by location. We can say, okay, uh, I have a certain location that's tracking down or tracking up. So especially if we have access to the cloud environment and an on-premise environment, say you're trying to move out of a specific data center. So we can look at that as a location and say, okay, well, how are we tracking on our migration project, right? Is, is location one going down, which is my on-premise data center, and location two going up uh, or not, right? We've had customers who've been like, yeah, we're migrating, but what I don't know is if people are shutting things off. And so this would give you that visibility. This would show you whether or not those asset levels are changing either by uh, location, device type, I could look at it just kind of high level OS. Um, so here I can see um, in this environment, you know, we've had uh, essentially more uh, access to uh, our Linux environment. So you can see that kind of swing up um, here at the end. You can also filter this by time as well. So uh, you won't probably see much change here, um, but I can come back and explore 
uh, and what that's going to do is essentially everything below these control bars is going to be affected. So as I scroll down the page, we have the summaries as well as an assets table. And so kind of keep in mind, you know, you were when you filter by time, you're controlling what's going to be on that page. So this is a totally new sort of access we're allowing our users to explore on. Additionally, here we have just kind of these summary panels. Um, and these were really built off of, you know, seeing what our um, customer and partner base was presenting to the rest of their organization at, as summaries. And so we wanted to just try and make that a little bit easier for people to just get the data they need, to look at it, see it in the platform, and it be always up to date and live. You may also notice, uh, particularly on some of your assessments, uh, you'll see something like this here, OS version versus uh, a nice pretty graph. And so there is some logic here that if the graph gets too big, it's too many categories in it, uh, it will change to a table. So just heads up for that. Um, and then lastly, on the assets page, we have the assets table. And so this was a really big change for us. Um, as I come down here, there is a link to the old assets page, uh, legacy assets page. So if I come here, I'm just going to open that new window so you can all see it. Um, what you had on this page was a division by um, device category. And so it was really hard to kind of get a full concept of, of the environment as well as kind of search across the whole data set. And so the big change here is now everything is in one table. If I wanted to filter to only my Windows devices, I can do that. If I wanted to see um, generic servers, I can do that. And then at the same time, there's a bit of a, again, a little pro tip here. If you throw in an exclamation point in front of it, that's going to do a not filter. So return to me every device that's not a generic server. So this just, just provides you more search and filtering capability within the environment. And you can also, if you wanted to get more details here, so let's look at my Windows machines. Um, I can come in and say, okay, let me see. Let's find some of some data in it. There we go. Uh, the same as the old platform with the right click on the device details. Uh, now that's all here. So we're really trying to work on a sort of design um, ethic of just not hiding features. Because that was kind of a problem before for us. It's like, oh, go here. And like, I didn't know you could click that. And so we're really trying to pull our features out so you as users can see them. Additionally, within the processes here, you can now uh, do search. So if I want every command line that has the word cat in it, I obviously don't have any. Um, I can do that for say, Microsoft. Um, I can look at those commands. See what uh, see what we're searching there. So this again provides just more filtering capability, uh, more searching, just better hands on the data. And certainly, if there's anything in the old uh, report that you're now missing, well, the old report's still here. I'd love to get feedback from uh, any of you on something that's missing. I know we have gotten a lot of uh, feedback on. You know, the old, there was sort of this full export full report here that no longer exists. Our thinking is that um, by putting everything in one table, you can now pull down um, the whole data set in one fell swoop. Uh, the current problem here is that the asset download uh, does limit to 10,000 rows. Uh, that's primarily because we uh, would, were basically breaking uh, the browser. Uh, the, the download was too big. And so in our current, um, in the release we're currently working on that's in development, we are working on a new export utility. Uh, so we are, we do want to lift that restriction. Uh, it's just we have to build a bit more infrastructure on our side to be able to allow for bigger sets of downloaded data. Um, and so I'm particularly excited about that utility. We're really trying to focus on getting uh, making export easier, getting our users the data they want, uh, and not really restricting access uh, to the raw data so people can get in and play with it and have it always be updated. And so lastly, I think from the assets page, there was an additional 
um, page we added called the Asset Errors page. So you can navigate it to it from here at the bottom or up to here at the top, Asset Errors. And so this page was um, created as a way to speed up discovery. Because, you know, at least from my experience and a lot of the feedback is, you know, discovery can be one of the more frustrating and time consuming and difficult parts of any assessment. Because, you know, that's where you're changing the unknown to the known. And uh, that's sometimes not an easy process. And so what we're doing here is we're pulling all the errors that we're receiving from the collection side on on premise and bringing those into the portal. So you no longer have to go through and do validation and work on the appliance. You can do some of that work here. And so the idea, let's just sort this by date. Um, the idea is you can come in and say, okay, well, show me every device that had a bad credential. And so I could download this, I could send it to my team or filter to, you know, this is all bad credentials on Windows servers, right? Credential unsuccessful. I'm going to drop this list out and I'm going to send it over to, um, say, my Windows admin to say, hey, these devices didn't, the, whatever credential lines up to SRZ was unsuccessful. What's going on, man? And so this is another way to help you speed that up. And so we swizzle this both ways. You can do by error type, so we can get that uh, by the different error types that we might have, as well as if I come down the page, I can look at a specific device. And again, pay attention to the date column here. Uh, I could look at a specific device and see, you know, what problems have we had on it? Um, we had a bad credential, so we tried WMI. Um, and it was unsuccessful. We got an NT status access denied. We also uh, had a SNMP detected, but we have no poses of warning, not an error, because uh, we didn't have SNMP credentials here. Then we get another warning to say WMI detected, but all WMI credentials unsuccessful. And so this is a way to kind of look at a device, get a sense for what errors were received in what order to again help you troubleshoot troubleshoot the environment and gain uh, the different ac access you need. Um, so again, I'm particularly excited about this feature too, uh, as I think it's just going to save people just a tremendous amount of time and effort. And we are looking to make a few more just usability tweaks um, to this page as well in the next coming weeks. Um, but yeah. That's, uh, this would be the asset errors page. So um, that, you know, for the most part is the Balsam release that we just put out. So a new dashboard, new security model, and an updated assets page. We're really excited to introduce time to the platform to bring entirely new values. And so I'm really excited to get feedback from all of you to let me know what you like and what you don't like because we really want um, the platform to be a good home. Uh, we know the work you guys do is hard uh, and challenging and often you have to do it at times. Nobody wants to work. And so uh, to the extent that we can make that a little bit easier, we want to be there for you. Um, and so with that, I'll see if there's any more questions and then um, we'll turn it over to Lauren. Okay, and while we take a couple questions, I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll, the first poll question uh, of the security, the dashboard, and the enhanced asset reporting, uh, which one of these features is most impactful to you today? Um, so if you'll go ahead and take a chance to answer those. Uh, the first question we have is if you can explain a little bit more about accessible and inaccessible devices. And I think that was probably asked before you covered the errors page, but uh, maybe elaborate a little bit. Yeah, sure thing. Let's hop back over to the, um, and so accessible, uh, think of that as we have a um, some form of collection 
um, against the device. So that's really driven. We have this export scope, which is a CSV that will drop down um, that will show you um, the different uh, subnet scanned, what was accessible and inaccessible. Inaccessible for us is, uh, I think it's probably easier to define inaccessible than it is accessible. Uh, inaccessible means that, hey, there's an IP here. So an IP responded to ping, um, but we were not able to collect any more meaningful data from it than that. So we have no OS level access, we have no hypervisor level access to that device. Perfect. And the other question we have is uh, whether or not we can get some of this asset information into CMDBs like ServiceNow or MicroFocus. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, and so, you, I mean, the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we really see that as a big use case uh, for us going forward. You know, we kind of started in a cloud space. I mean, before that, we were doing discovery. And so we're really trying to add more kind of asset management, asset discoveries, be doing continual discoveries. We have a ServiceNow plugin that is free. You just go into the ServiceNow marketplace, can pull that down and install it. And so what that means is you can get all of this good, rich discovery, uh, the service mapping in terms of application grouping, um, as well as uh, the security modules that we're doing. So all that rich data can be pumped into ServiceNow or a CMDB because uh, we have a uh, RESTful API that can be used to ingest that data. And so specifically, hey, I'm going to pull that in my CMDB and uh, go create uh, work tickets to solve uh, these problems or check on a certain thing. And so I think you're going to see a lot more features from us coming in that area as, as the time kind of ticks forward. Perfect. And with that, I just wanted to quickly share uh, some of the poll results before we turn it over to Lauren. Uh, it looks like uh, quite a few of you voted, and security is the winner uh, today as far as most impactful. So we'd love to hear that and also love to hear some additional feedback on how we can make those features better. Um, and with that, I'm going to. Um, take and Steve, control. if I can, I'm just going to jump over you here real quick, but uh, I do want to say to everybody on the call, you know, um, our customer success team is really great. Um, they're really interested in just getting on and helping all of you just get more value uh, out of out of the platform. And so I would encourage all of you to please uh, reach out to them. They are not salespeople. Um, they are not compensated in any way uh, for that. They are there to help our customers get more value and uh, get that feedback, set up calls, um, you know, with me to review roadmap or go through training. You know, we're really investing heavily in the success of our customers and our partner base. So, you know, uh, please take advantage of that resource. And, uh, and Lauren is awesome. You're going to hear her talk here. Um, I know you're super excited. So um, I'll stop talking now and, uh, and turn it over. All right. Well, thank you for that introduction, Zane. Much appreciated. And um, Stephen, if you wouldn't mind bringing up the slide. Sure thing. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And thanks again, everyone, for joining the call today. Um, as Zane and Stephen mentioned, my name is Lauren, and I'm a customer success manager here at Risk Networks. Um, again, as Zane mentioned, to reiterate, and the entire risk team is focused on um, making sure that every single one of our customers and partners have the resources and support necessary to be successful with the platform. So we wanted to take just a few minutes today um, during the presentation to share an overview of how we can help you achieve that success. And this slide is just a general overview of the primary elements we focus on to help support our customers. This may include broader involvement of the Risk Networks team, such as our technical support and professional services engineers. But customer success is really here to be your primary point of contact to make sure you have that guidance that you need. 
Um, initially, our, our first step is to understand your goals and priorities for you, utilizing the risk platform, what you want to accomplish, as well as any important timelines and milestones along the way. As you're getting started in using um, the platform, we want to make sure that you're able to accomplish the first step in um, discovery and mapping your IT environment as efficiently as possible. Really, the aim here is to reduce your time to value and leveraging the reports, dashboards, and intelligence available within the platform after um, completing those first steps of discovery and mapping um, your environment. We're also here to help enable additional users and broader teams to use the platform and provide guidance on how they can use the data and analysis available for their specific projects and priorities. In November of last year, in 2018, uh, we released a feature to invite read-only users to assessments, which is essentially inviting someone to the assessment with view-only privileges so that they can consume the information but won't have the ability to make any edits or accidental changes to the assessment. Many of our customers and partners uh, found this extremely valuable to bring in more users to collaborate within the platform, but without having the risk of, again, those accidental changes being made. Adding uh, the option to invite the read-only users last year, as well as all the features discussed today, were heavily influenced by customer requests and feedback we've received. We're always looking to gather and understand your feedback on what's most important, the additional features you'd like to see, and then share that feedback with the broader Risk Networks team, um, like Zane and the rest of our product development team. So as we have our subsequent named releases, uh, as Zane mentioned earlier, we've had Aspen and Balsam and we'll have more trees throughout the year. We want to be sure that we're proactively keeping you up to speed on those new features and platform updates so that you're able to leverage the full value of the platform as it continues to evolve. So with these ongoing platform updates and inviting additional users, the platform really becomes a system of records for your IT environment that you'll begin to reference and use for ongoing projects. And the customer success team and myself are here to help you along the way. We're really looking forward to working with you. You can reach the team at customer success at risknetworks.com. Um, again, if there's any questions we can help you with, um, set up some trainings, anything that you need to be successful. Um, so with that, thank you again for joining, and I will turn it back over to Stephen. All right. Thank you, Lauren. And we've got um, another poll question. Um, what can uh, customer success do to make your team more successful and while we wait for responses on that um, we did have one question Lauren you mentioned read-only users and someone asked sure. what's the additional cost uh, for adding users to the platform that's a great question there is no um, additional cost to adding users to the platform you can invite as many users as you'd like so please feel free to take advantage of the read-only users to invite folks to take a look at the platform, show them exactly what they need. That's available in the user access section in the main menu. And if there's any questions on how to invite read-only users, um, we can help through the steps for that. But again, um, there's no additional cost for inviting more users to your platform. Perfect. And with that, um, I'm going to close that poll. And I'm going to ask you guys one more poll question, and this is based on uh, some information we collected in our environment. So on February 1st, uh, we launched our security module, and since then we found roughly 55,000 devices with security vulnerabilities on them. Of those devices, what percentage do you think had level three or higher threats? Um, is that zero to 10 percent, 11 to 30, 31 to 50, or over 50 percent? Um, so I'll give you guys a chance to answer that question briefly. And while we do that, uh, someone is asking again if the webinar will be recorded, and it, it is recorded, and you will receive a copy of that afterwards.
Okay, and with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. It looks like uh, 67 percent said that it was between 31 and 50 percent of devices had level three or higher uh, threats, and that is correct. We saw about 47 percent of devices with level three or higher threats. And again, that's uh, just since February 1st. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll we'll get some more numbers around that. And with that, I uh, just wanted to ask you all, first of all, thank you again for attending. Um, and please stay in touch with us. As always, you can reach our sales team by reaching out to sales at risknetworks.com. And as Lauren mentioned, you can reach our customer success team through customer success at risknetworks.com. And I would encourage you uh, to reach out to Lauren's team uh, for general questions. A lot of you said, mentioned that you were interested in having support as a, or having customer success as a liaison between your team and support. They can absolutely help with that. Um, and also they're gonna help with that security licensing we, we promised. So if you're interested in the three months of security, at no additional cost, uh, please reach out to customer success and let them know and they will help you get that licensed. Um, so again, thank you all for attending. And um, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. All right, thank you and have a great day. Take care. Thanks, everybody.